Last June, I was part of filming a demonstration of a new lighting system by Diderlet. The system is called Lightstream, and I thought it was very elegant. As a cinematographer, this is something I was looking for for a very long time. I'm just like touching the surface here of what I can do with these lights. I've been using them professionally for the last four months. And it allows me extreme control on the light source, the angles, the spread and the quality and character of the light that I bring on my actors. One of the essential keys to the lighting system is the light source itself. Personally, I like to use the DLED 9 with a parallel beam adapter. The adapter allows me to double the output of the light. This is a lot of light for a small instrument. I did a comparative test with a Fresnel 1K and a Didolite DL150. I set the parallel beam adapter on the DL150. As a result, I got a cleaner and slightly more powerful beam with the DL150. I tried the parallel beam adapter onto the Fresnel for no result. So, back to the museum, my old friend. So I want to use a very pure and powerful light source that I will be able to reflect and reflect again and again to create multiple sources using only one light. So using one light and maybe five reflectors of different qualities, I can create a three-point light, for instance, or a four-point light. Now the reflectors come in different grades and quality of reflectiveness. Reflector one is almost like a mirror, except it doesn't transfer image, but only the energy of the light source. It has a virtual reflection of 1.5 times the distance of the light from the reflector. The spread angle is 4 degrees and allows 98 to 100 percent of the light to be transferred. Number one is the initial source that sends the light to the other reflectors. Now the reflector number two with an angle of 12 degrees is also very punctual, a good transmitter, and it can bring you a very powerful key light. And we begin here to see the combination of the softness of light that is created through the double aspherical systems combined with the characteristics of the reflector itself. The light really acquires qualities that are exceptional. Then we have reflector number three, a wider angle of 50 degrees, much softer, excellent for fill light or a wider kind of backlight. Reflector number four has a wide angle of 95 degrees of spread. It acts like a whiteboard, except it's more rigid and durable and has very predictable values of reflection. The magic of data light light stream comes in the combination of all these key elements. The source light, the beam adapter, and the reflectors. Also important, the reflectors come at a fraction of the cost of a lighting instrument, which means there's enormous savings to be had. It's very different to use a direct light on an object or to reflect the light. You acquire qualities of softness there's a polarization of the light that happens through the virtual reflection and comes to the object from farther away than the light source. It looks very much like natural light. This is the quality of the light stream, a light that's retransmitted from one reflector to another reflector, acquiring all kinds of qualities. The virtual reflection allows you to expand the space. Reflecting through one, two, or three reflectors creates that effect of distance. I love the fact that I can create something that has a unique signature that looks nothing like any other system because this is just happening right now. This is all new. So let's give Dido uh, the opportunity to show you a little demonstration of what we did last June in Toronto using the light stream. Pan it a little bit until he feels it coming here. At the moment, you don't know where you are in the motor position, so you just have to try and see. Do I get it there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see? Right there. Yeah. Okay. So because when it, when it changes, then, then it's easier to see. And then the third one, the little one on top, takes the light back onto this reflector here. And that again is a motorized one. So when you move that a little bit, you can see how the backlight that's now on him may go. See, now it's going away. Now try to bring it back. There it is. Yeah? OK. So, so far that's easy. Then you bring up that light. That's a bicolor light. And 
it could work as an uplight on him. Yeah? And can you change that a little bit? Actually, it has to come forward a bit. The reflector has to come forward. Yeah, right there. You got it. Yeah. We can play with the color temperature on the up light. Yeah, you can bring it down. It's all coming from the big light, and that's daylight. And that reflects and reflects, and it doesn't change color. So on that one, we can't. If we were to set up a bicolor into that reflector, then we could. And then we could also add, if we wanted to, a, another backlight. That could be this one here. Uh, that's the 10. That's very powerful. That's much too strong as a backlight. Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. So now you bring it down, down, down until it becomes more subtle. And then, of course, again, we can change on this one the color temperature, make it warmer or cooler. That's great luxury. A cameraman sitting in the chair and can see himself. And he's a good looking cameraman, too. Well, I would go so far. <laughs> Sometimes, with the reflected light, the light is very structured. It's beautiful to bring out texture of the skin and so on, but sometimes you want to smoothen it over. And that's where you can do this soft light. That's a bicolor light. And we could also use that with a large reflector uh, to make it even gentler. So to fill it in, especially when you work with many reflectors and different people and backlights and some TV shows it becomes a little bit too harsh. And then you move that in, move it all the way to the left, further over. Again, that's a bicolor light we can now use to change color temperature and make things smoother, softer. Use the eflect to put something in the background. And it's amazing what the same filter can do. It works marvelous when you change the focus on the light or put the parallel beam adapter on it. Um, and then also what we could do is to uh, project a background. So you get a little bit of the idea. And the nice thing is that when the general light level is lower, then the gel projections can work beautifully. Sometimes when it gets too contrasty, too structured, then adding the, the larger soft light uh, helps to make it gentler all over. That's basically the tools and toys that we wanted to show. And it's best if you just play with it.